All right, welcome back. In this part, we're going to take the renders that we set up last time and then start compositing those. This is going to be closer to the final. We're also going to be doing some very cheap lens flare techniques. And if you're looking for a more advanced way of doing this, I do recommend optical flares. And this is going to be a very, very hacky way of doing some more subtle lens flare, more like atmospherics. So if that sounds interesting, let's get started. And now we're going to take our version two frames and finish the composite using the newest renders from Maya. So hopefully you will not need to go back to Maya to make any other changes. If you do or you, you notice some egregious problem, something that you, you can't fix in After Effects and something that is distracting to the scene and it's just not good, you're really not happy with it, or it's an error where you really do need to fix, then yes, you should go back to Maya and make those corrections and then render out a version three. You might only need to render out one of the layers, or maybe you need to render out just a part of it or something like that. You can always go back and tweak things though forever. So I think for the purpose of this assignment, as long as the overall composite looks good and there's no noticeable errors, unless it's something that's a, a problem or something that would be a noticeable problem, I wouldn't really worry about it. You will always have a chance to resubmit this assignment if you realize that it's not, it's not quite up to par or if I think something could be done a little bit better, you will have the chance to render out a version three and submit that instead. Okay, so we're gonna load in version two. And to do that, if you did not have a version two and you just overwrote your version one, you would just right click over all of those layers and click reload, but hopefully you did render out a version two. And some of you might be on version three or version four or whatever, it doesn't really matter, but hopefully this is not version one. So we're going to go to dust version one, replace footage with file. And then in the images folder here, you can see that a version two has been created. Let's go to the dust and then I can click on any one of these. And as long as the EXR sequence is checked, it will import the version two. Next, we'll go down to the environment, replace footage with file. We'll grab the version two of our environment layer. Same thing for the ship. And then the same thing for our sky as well. Okay, so there we go. Right away, this, the sky looks pretty dark, so we're going to change that. But I want to go right to the very end and show that the dust now looks a bit better in my opinion. It's a bit thicker. Before, it just kind of faded away really unnaturally. Also, the ground plane is occluding the landing gear, which is exactly what we needed to have happen. Because on mine, if you remember, it was, it was kind of messed up. The landing gear was sticking on top of the ground. Okay, so there's going to be a few things that I'd like to fix here. So I'm going to just pull this up a little bit so we can see all those layers. And then I'm going to go down to the sky. And then for the sky, I think it's a little bit too dark. So I'm going to go and add a curves adjustment to this. And basically, I just want to lift up some of the brighter midtones. all the way from the shadows to the highlights, it's, it's going to be boosted just a little bit. So that looks a little bit better. Next, uh, I noticed this, these specular hits from the rocks. And for me, while it is how the material is created, I really don't like them. So if we go down to our depth of field and we turn this off, you can see this is just like a hot spot, like a specular highlight on the rocks render layer, but I don't really like that. So we have a few options. So on the environment specular here, I could click T for opacity and I could lessen the intensity of it. But if we look at the overall shot and we just toggle this layer, even back at 100%, toggle it on and off, the specular pass is not doing a lot. So I could just turn this off and it doesn't really look that much worse. Like we are losing a little bit of light here, but honestly, I think it's worth not having those really distracting highlights there. So I'm just gonna turn that layer completely off. You'll also notice that I didn't even composite my glare last time. So I do have a glare pass. So if I wanted to add the glare pass, I could have done that. So if I make that into glare, you can see there's a little bit of a hit there. But now that we remove the specular pass, 
that wouldn't be that wouldn't really make sense to happen. So it, this is completely up to you if you want to leave those in, that's perfectly fine. If your material is a little bit different to mine or the angle's different, you might not see those. But for me, I just I didn't like them, so I wanted to remove them. You can also see that the ship is looking pretty dark again. So on the ship CC layer, I'm going to go to the exposure node and on the offset, I'm going to just boost that up by 0 0.01. And you can see that that just boosts it just a little bit more. We don't want to lift it too much, but I think that looks a little bit better. On our depth of field, I also noticed that it looks pretty good where it is after frame 70 or so. But our depth of field before that, I think, looks a little bit too strong, especially on the back. So at around frame 70 ish, I'm going to animate the blur radius, and then I'm going to go right to the very beginning here at frame zero, and then I'm going to drop that down to something like, I don't know, we could do one. We don't want to get rid of the blur completely, but that looks a little bit better. It's like the focusing will change slightly throughout the shot. So if I click U, just have two keyframes here. And then if we wanted to ease those in and out, we can just select these keyframes here and click F9. So if I undo that, clicking F9 is the same thing in the graph editor as clicking this button right here, easy ease. But I can just click F9 and it does the same thing. As the ship comes closer and closer and closer, the blur will change a little bit. I think that will just look a little bit, a little bit nicer. In terms of the overall color correction, I think it looks pretty good, but when the dust starts coming on, I think everything looks a little bit reddish. On our color correction and adjustment layer, I'm going to go down to the elementary color that we added and then just drop down the saturation just a little bit more. You could even do something that's a lot more desaturated. I kind of like it like this, but I think the dust itself might need just a little less saturation. So if I go to the dust layer, I could add a hue and saturation effect. And then we could just drop down the saturation to something like, I don't know, negative 15. Now you could drop down the saturation more if you wanted to, or if you wanted your dust to be a little bit lighter, you could do that too. You grab a curves effect on it. We could boost that a little bit if we wanted to, something more like that. That's up to you. Just do something that you think looks good. What we want to avoid though, we don't want the dust to be really dark because it looks weird. And we don't want it to be too bright either. Okay. You want a nice balance. There's something in this range. You could also just simply go and click on T for opacity. And remember, you can lower the opacity. So if you if your dust was too thick, you can always do this. Now remember though that the ship was rendered, the ship and the, the environment was rendered with the dust on at whatever setting you had on in Maya. So if your dust was really, really thick and you had a lot of it, the shading on the ship will be darker and the same for the environment as well. Likewise, if your dust was barely visible in Maya, it's probably not going to be casting a lot of shadow on the other objects. But if you need to make your dust thicker, you can always simply duplicate your dust layer and you could do something more like this. Although you will run into the issue like this, where you can start to see a silhouette around your ship. So in this case, you would want to, on the, on the duplicate, you want to pull that down until you couldn't really see that anymore. You'd have to be pretty subtle with that. Okay. I think one dust layer for me is good, and I don't, I don't need anything else than that. And I actually quite like it without the curves. So I'll leave the curves there if I want to, but I'll just turn the effect off. It'd be really cool to add some extra debris, and this is my intention. But for right now, I think this is this is good without any more debris. Uh, if we if this was like a portfolio piece, that would be really cool. If you're interested in doing more of a visual effects type of thing for Capstone, you could absolutely do something like this and just make it you know a lot better or a lot more involved. Okay, so another thing I want to do is add a lens flare. Now I mentioned before that lens flares are actually a little bit tricky to do, but because the sun is so far off screen, right? We could have just some kind of glow of light and that light glow is going to look pretty nice when we composite that on all of our layers right here. So let's grab a new solid layer. We'll call this lens flare. Click OK. And on this layer, I want to grab a gradient effect. 
is going to be called gradient ramp. Grab that. So if you select the gradient ramp effect, you basically get these two targets. So you have by default a linear gradient. So you get two color values and this is, creates a gradient between them. But if we change the ramp shape to radial ramp, we then get a circular shape for our ramp. I'm going to swap the two colors here and then I'm going to pull down the dark value here and then the upper value, the, the bright value, we're just going to pull those off to the side, something like that. So we get some nice screen right to screen left glow. Next for the color, this one we want to do something that's kind of brownish. If you were picking a color for like the actual sun, you'd do something like, oh, it's, it's yellow, right? But you can see how that's looking here. It's like, it looks just way too bright. So really, we could either do this and then lower the opacity like all the way down. But I found it's a little bit easier just to pick a color more like around this. So it looks very gray for us, which is fine. And remember, with the OCIO color profile on here, all the values do look a little bit different. Okay, so if you were trying to do a color picker, you want to make sure you've soloed this. But with the OCIO on, it's changing all the colors, basically. All right, so that looks, that looks all right, but then we're going to add it, and then you can really see what this is going to do. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see how this has created some kind of glow of light from screen right to screen left. So I want to add a glow like this, and then I want to do some very basic animation with it. You can also see how you can change the intensity just by pulling in or pulling out the start of ramp target right here and it makes it all a little bit brighter. So next, because the camera is changing and the position of the sun changes relative to the camera, we're going to animate the start of ramp right here. So that's at frame zero. And then we'll go forward until the camera is about in a position where it's not really moving up and down anymore. So maybe something like around 160. And then we're going to zoom out and then we're going to pull this like way up. Something more like that. So it's like pretty far off screen. And if we fit up to 100% and then toggle our lens flare, you can see how that's still influencing the shot quite a bit, even though it's so high up. And remember to see it again, you just select your, your layer up there. We could even pull that up a little bit higher. And then I can ease this transition by clicking U. And then we could ease both of these. Marquee, select both of those keyframes and then click F9. I'll change into like a little hourglass icon. And all that does is just eases in those two keyframes there. And basically, we'll just get a very nice, subtle lens flare. Now, it would be really cool to use a plugin like Optical Flares. Optical Flares is going to get you get those rings on the camera lens. But uh, really, we just want something pretty subtle for this. All right, guys, thanks for watching. In the next part, we're going to do our camera shake and film grain. So I'll see you guys in the next video.